Hello, my name is Ed Trolley, and I'm Senior Vice President of Managed Training Services at NIIT. NIIT is a global training outsourcing company, one of the leaders in the industry. Uh, we've been around for over 36 years and work in over 40 countries. I'm going to talk about transformation today. The title of my session is Transformation Revisited. I added the word revisited because I've been talking about transformation for a number of years. Uh, and, and back in 1999, I wrote a book called Running Training Like a Business. Uh, and in 2018, I was delivering a transformation presentation. And one of the things I said was, the more things change, the more they stay the same. That's not the case today, and I want to talk about why it's not the case with this presentation. So let's get started. There are a set of unanswered questions that have been, that have been present around L&D for a number of years. Things like, how much are we spending on training? What are we getting for it? What value is it delivering? How can we make it better, faster, and cheaper? Unanswered questions. If any of these are unanswered for you, then you should consider what's going on and how you might get, get answers to these questions and get them quickly. I believe that these unanswered questions have created a business imperative for L&D that, that, that is about reducing costs or getting costs to what I call acceptable levels, moving fixed cost to variable cost. Business executives hate to pay for allocation. They hate to pay for things that they, that they don't have any control over. Uh, becoming more relevant, being totally aligned with the business, laser beam aligned, increasing value and focusing on the strategic elements of the business. So. What I'm saying today is the more things change, the more they seem to get worse. And that's a serious indictment on us that I think we need to take a critical look at and do something about soon. And here's, here's the evidence. So Josh Burson, we all know Josh Burson, uh, he did some research in 2016, published in 2017. He said, never has development been more important, never has it been more important, yet faith of the organization in the L&D function to deliver value has never been so low. That's a very serious statement for us. Corporate Executive Board says the stuff that we produce, 64% inside of corporate L&D and 70% outside of corporate L&D in the businesses is going to waste because it's redundant or of low quality. I mean, by the way, Corporate Executive Board also says that 45% of, of what we take out to our organizations is what, we, what he call, they call scrap learning. That's learning that doesn't get applied. That's, that's, you might as well take the money invested in that learning and tear it up in little pieces. Burson uh, also did a study and said that the net promoter score for L&D is minus eight. And he made this statement that this is about as low as it can go. Well, we had Bill Pelster in to our customer conference uh, two years ago and he, he's a senior partner at Deloitte, and he said the net promoter score is minus 31. So minus eight is not as, it, as low as it can go. There's a new book out by uh, Tom Peters, the, the famous author, business author. The book is titled The Excellence Dividend, Meeting the Tech Tide with Work That Wows and Jobs That Last. I saw an article in CLO Magazine a couple months ago uh, written by Jack and Patty Phillips, old friends of mine, and, and they, they said that Peters devoted a whole chapter to training in his book. That's, uh, that's unbelievable in my mind for a guy like Tom Peters. He made four bets about how executives view training. Bet one, five of 10 CEOs see training as an investment rather than, or, or expense rather than investment. Five of 10 CEOs see it as defense rather than offense. Five of 10 CEOs see training as a necessary evil rather than a strategic opportunity. And eight of 10 CEOs, this is pretty amazing, in a 45 minute tour of their business would not mention training. Lastly, Peter says training should be for CEOs investment number one because that investment pays off almost immediately. I, su I suggest that you all go out and buy this Tom Peters book, that you give it to your CEO with a note attached that says read the chapter on training and then let's talk. That's the way you get connected to the business. That's the way you get on the CEO's agenda, not training's agenda. Some hot off the press research from McKinsey that came out, I don't know, less, about a month ago. Uh, I'm just gonna highlight some of the things in here. It says L&D leaders must embrace a broader role within the organization and formulate an ambi ambitious vision for the function. 
Every business leader would agree that L&D must align with a company's overall priorities. Yet, research has found that many L&D functions fall short. Only 40% of companies say that their learning strategy aligned to business goals. That's not running training like a business, I can assure you. And 60% then, learning has no explicit connection to a company's strategic objectives. A learning strategy's execution impact should be measured using key KPIs. Uh, the first indicator should look at the business excellence, how closely aligned our L&D initiatives and investments are with business priorities. Second KPI looks at learning excellence, whether interventions change people's behavior and performance. And lastly, there's an operational excellence KPI measure that looks at how well the investments and resources are being used. Lastly, accurate measurement is not simple. We know that. And many organizations still rely on traditional impact metrics such as learning program, satisfaction, and completion scores. Yet, McKinsey says high-performing organizations focus on outcome-based metrics such as impact on individual performance, employee engagement, team effectiveness, and business process improvement. So, that's why transformation is an important topic for all of us in L&D. I would suggest to you that transformation requires a leap out to where you want to go and then work your way back and figure out a way to get there because what we have found you know, over the years is you cannot transact your way to transformation. So if you begin where you are and try to increment your way along, you will never get to a transformed state. You got to get your, get your view all the way out and then come back and work your way there. This is a transformation framework right out of Running Training Like a Business, my book that talks about you know, the from to of transformation. I won't go through all these, but the, the, the one couple that I think are important. One, moving from a training department to a training enterprise. What's that mean? It means acting like a business, talking the language of business, measuring yourself by the business metrics, not the training metrics. I know you gotta measure activity levels in training, and you gotta report on those. But at the end of the day, those aren't all of the measures, we think they are oftentimes. We gotta figure out things like value we deliver, uh, cost we manage, cost we take out, performance we improve, those sorts of things. From cost of training to investment and learning, from attendees to customers, measuring activity levels to measuring results. All these transformation from twos are critically important and things we ought to be doing something about today. This is a model uh, that I call the total cost model for training. If you look at the big triangle um, and, and look at the pieces of it, the very top small triangle is the direct cost of training. So this is the cost of staff, vendors, facilities, those sorts of things. That's a direct cost. All the other costs are indirect costs, like the cost of a participant's time while they're in training. That's a training cost, an indirect training cost. The cost of poor quality. So if the training's no good, it has to be redone, it has to be reworked or thrown away, that's a cost of poor quality. Lastly, the biggest item is the lost productivity cost when people are in training. They're not doing the jobs they're being paid to do. If you look at that big triangle, what I have found over the years is that cost of the big triangle represents 5x the cost of the small triangle. I would say most organizations are not managing what you're really spending. So what do you do about this? You gotta reduce the total cost of training you got to get it to acceptable levels. And that's not just the direct cost. That means the big triangle has to be made into a littler triangle, a smaller triangle. This is, a, this is something we call the camel chart. You can see that's because of the little hump in the middle. We looked at, when we were writing tra running training like a business, we looked at the activities in the value chain of training. And we talked with business executives, defined the activities of the value chain and asked them on a scale of low to high in the context of value add being defined as your external customer is willing to pay for it in the cost of your product and service. Where would you put these activities? And, and you can see the curved line that represents how business executives plotted those activities against the value add measure. The bar, the bar graph here, the bars represent where most organizations have their resources and dollars invested. You can tell, it's pretty obvious, that they are in the inverse of the value add. So we got a lot of money and a lot of resources spending time on what I call low value added activities and not enough time on the high value added stuff. 
I would suggest that you ought to think about redeploying resources and money toward the higher value activities and figuring out other ways to do the lower value added activities. So you can lower the cost. You can move the cost from fixed to variable. You can utilize a partner. No reason for you to invest your scarce resources on this low value added stuff and redeploy your resources and dollars to higher value added work. So let me offer up some transformation must do's. The first one is you got to run at the speed of business, not the speed of training. Because we all know that when you put your training plan together at the end of last year or the beginning of this year, within a month, it's out of date because the business has moved and your plan has not. So it's really important that we're running at the speed of business and not our old speed. Second must do is we got to be lean and agile. We all know that. How many times have all of you taken, been asked to take costs and resources out of your organizations? That's because our, our customers believe we're spending too much money, we're not lean, we're not agile, we're not fast, those sorts of things. The third must do is we got to ensure a laser focus on the business. That's important to drive business value. And then the fourth must do is we got to provide data-driven analytics. That's to prove business value. Now, I would suggest that the reason that's important is we have to build confidence in our customers that when they invest in us, they're getting something back. Once they have that confidence, you don't have to worry about providing analytics anymore because they're confident, just like they're confident in advertising and marketing and those sorts of things. The last one is to drive innovation, and that's not innovation for innovation's sake. That's innovation that can be applied to create business impact. If it's not creating business impact, it's irrelevant. So the five must-dos of transformation for L&D. Just a couple other slides here I want to talk about. One is some no-brainers that I think are important to mention. If you don't have them today, in order to get laser beamed onto business, install relationship managers, some people call them business engagement managers, install that role to make certain that you're tightly engaged with the business, laser beamed on what's, what's going on with them and the challenges they're dealing with and the opportunities they're trying to pursue so that you can help them with training if that's an appropriate way to help them. You gotta optimize how training is delivered by outside providers. We see companies all the time that have thousands and thousands of training vendors they use. And if you look underneath the covers on that, you'll find that there are many training vendors that are selling the same, basically the same training and charging different, different, different fees for that training across your organization, wherever it's being bought. It's not unusual to find the same vendor selling the tra same training program in one part of the organization at one price and another part of the organization at a different price. So clean it up, optimize it, rationalize it. Get down to the, the, the few that you really need to deliver the value you're looking to deliver. You gotta dramatically reduce fixed costs. The reason I say that is, is business executives hate fixed costs. They hate being allocated charges for things they don't use. They like to pay for what they use. And that's a variable cost kind of model, a pay for use model. You got to measure what matters. It's not, it's not acceptable to say measurement's too tough to do. It doesn't, it can't be done. Oh, no one wants it. That's not true. Executives want it. The ROI Institute did a study many years ago that proved that, that executives want measures on ROI and business impact. And lastly, utilize outsourcing as a strategic lever to gain access to capability and experience you don't have and can't afford to build. To variableize your cost, you can get a pay-for-use model with outsourcing providers. Reduce your unit costs. That's an important element because if you're delivering enormous value at a lower unit cost, you'll get more investment. And lastly, you can utilize outsourcing to gain scalability. Many of you, I am certain, have faced the dilemma of being out of capacity and you have demand that exceeds that capacity and you can't respond to it. That's not a good thing to happen for your customers. So why is this important? Why should you think about transformation? I don't think it's an option. I think we have to fix our broken investment value equation. I think we've got to move fixed cost to variable cost where possible. You don't like being first on the chopping block. I wouldn't when things get tough. But, but in many organizations, that's where L&D is today. And if you don't transform, you're not going to like the answer. You're going to be told what to do, and it's not going to be pleasant for you or your organization. And, by the way, the bar keeps getting higher. So where you think it is today, 
Next week, next year, it's higher than that. And lastly, I believe your, com your company expects it of you. They expect you to get in front of this thing, to think out, to understand what's going on in the business, and to take actions in your organization to better respond, both in cost and value. So let me read uh, a couple paragraphs here. I wrote this 19 years ago, and I think it still holds true today. Training and development is and has been at one of those proverbial forks in the road. Most training organizations take the familiar and well-worn path, crowded with committed, enthusiastic, and highly capable corporate training and development specialists from around the world. The discussion on this path consistently revolves around difficult, often intangible goals, such as creating world-class knowledge workers and delivering competencies. Traffic moves at a steady, purposeful pace, as it has for decades. I believe that innovative people will take a different path. On this road less traveled, the pace is fast, the destination clear. Here, training is driven to be better, faster, and cheaper by the relentless forces of impatient customers and the bottom line. This path has been cleared by true pioneers who realize that training organizations, like the businesses they support, must deliver unmistakable, tangible value to their customers. I believe transformation in transformation, the view is worth the climb. Thank you.